So, you've finally gotten DCS, or you've had it for a little while, but you've never quite known what to put on your joystick. Well, this video is tailored just for you. Okay, there is a lot to cover, so I'm going to try and go through this as quickly as possible. The first thing you should know is that I'm using a Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas. In the description below, you will find a picture of it with all the names of all the buttons that I have on here, because that is what I'm going to be referencing when I'm telling you what I have set up for my joystick. Okay, so let's go into our options, controls, and for F15. We're going to be in the All category. I'm going to go through this from top to bottom, and I'll make sure to have the keyboard highlighted as well, so you can see what the keyboard shortcuts are. Due to your joystick not having as many buttons as mine, you are going to need to forego a few of these buttons. I will try and tell you which ones are the most important to have, and which ones you can sort of just avoid or use the keyboard, for example. There may be more buttons you might like on here that I didn't put on, there may be less. It is all up to you. But this is the general gist of what you might want to look forward to, or at least have a pen and paper ready and write them down so you know what they are. And uh, I will try and sort of go through the functions of some of them, uh, the more important ones, but it's not going to be in depth. If you want to truly understand what these things do, manual. You're going to need to reference the manual. I'm sorry, there's just no other way. There's way too much. Anyway, let's start. The very first thing you're going to need to do before you start anything is if you do have rudder pedals, let's say you don't have a 3D twist joystick and you're using actual rudder pedals, you are going to see that this flight rudder pedal uh, panel is going to be here. Then you have your throttle, your joystick, and if you slide over here, you got your track AR and mouse. Uh, but because of the way DCS works, whenever you do have pedals plugged in, uh, it is by default going to assign buttons for your pedals here. We want none of that. So we're going to just select anywhere on this column, as long as this is selected, and you're going to clear the category, which is going to clear this entire column. Don't worry about it. We will map the rudders in the next step when we go into the axis. Right now, we're just assigning buttons. From the very top, the first thing I'm going to have are these uh, four things over here. These are my BVR, my uh, vertical scan mode, bore sight, and uh, longitudinal missile aiming or flood mode. Uh, and these are set to my throttle. They are my coolie head up, right, down, left. Now, I have left navigational mode alone because it is not something that I need immediately on my hands. And uh, so I can just always lean forward and press one on the keyboard if I ever need to go into nav mode. So there's that. So coolie head up was going to switch to my BVR mode, right to my VSS, down to bore sight, and left will switch to my uh, flood mode. Uh, Aim 9's by default, but if I switch over to my Aim 7's, it will use uh, flood mode for that missile. The next thing that's up is relatively important, especially if you're going to be flying formation off of someone, is the air brake on, air brake off. And this is mapped to my throttle on my thumb uh, for the uh, air brake buttons, forward and aft. The next thing that I have is the autopilot. So, on my left side with my throttle where my pinky switch is, I have the attitude hold. And this is like the uh, initial autopilot that you need to have. So I have that on my pinky if I need it immediately. Next is the altitude hold, and this is the uh, little switch that I have on my autopilot panel at the base of my uh, throttle. Uh, so that's there. You can also set it so that the altitude and the path mode switch there if you have the Thrustmaster can be set to both of these. But I just like to have one autopilot uh, option available uh, without having to take my hand off of the throttle. That's why I use the pinky button. Of course, do not forget you're going to need the autopilot disengage and I use the autopilot engage disengage button on the autopilot uh, panel of the throttle. For my Canon or C in the keyboard, uh, in order to switch my heads-up display uh, to display the gun, I use the front joystick paddle switch. This works a little differently in the Sukhois, and I'll go over that for the Sukhois later on, but for the F15, it is not as necessary to have uh, if you're running out of space, but it is something that's nice. It is a lot more critical on the Sukhois, and that will be explained uh, later on. Okay, so as you can see, if I were to squeeze the gun, uh, I can see the bullets are coming out, but I don't know where they're going. So if I were to lock this guy up, that's great, but I'm still getting no indicator. It's not until I flip to my guns, C on the keyboard, or the flap switch in front of the joystick, where I get a gun indicator, and now I can squeeze and team kill my friend. <laughs> Next, we've got our countermeasures. Now, the countermeasures, I actually have an entire hat key for my countermeasures. 
Uh, if you are running out of space and you can only afford to have one button for countermeasures, the countermeasures release or Q is there. It will dispense both chaff and flare. Now, if you do have a bunch of buttons you can assign, you can also make things a little bit more interesting by only dispensing chaff or only dispensing flares. This, I use my CMS key, my countermeasures. So my countermeasures left is chaff, countermeasures right key is flares, countermeasures forward is Q if I'm just unaware of what's happening, I need to dump both. And I've also got CMS down by pressing in, which will activate my ECM. So by pressing the CMS up key or Q, you release both the chaff and the flares right now at the same time. But that's a waste if you know that there's only a uh, IR missile coming at you, in which case you can dump only flares, and I use my CMS right in order to do so. Or if you know that there is a radar guided missile, you would just pop uh, chaff. So as you can see, little chaff is coming out with my CMS left. In order to use display zoom in and display zoom out, I use my DMS up and down keys in order to zoom. So with the radar turned on, if you notice, in order to increase or decrease the display that I'm watching, currently uh, I'm doing 40 uh, nautical miles in front of me, uh, if I press the DMS up and DMS down, I will change how far and how close I'm looking uh, on the display screen. As a luxury of having all these buttons, I also have set up my engine left and right start and stop switches on my Thrustmaster. Uh, these are my engine operate switches located on the throttle base. And these buttons, however, are not necessary and are only there if you have a luxury of having extra buttons that you have not assigned yet. You obviously have your flaps, and I'm using my little flaps button on the left side of my throttle. I have uh, flaps down to uh, put it to landing position, flaps up for up, and that's it. Or if you're running out of space and you just need one button, the flaps up and down toggle switch is F. The left side of my throttle, I also have a button for uh, lights. I use the uh, forward uh, switch from my pinky in order to turn the nose gear lights on, and I use the aft position to flip the navigational lights on the outside of the aircraft. These are obviously not important to have on your stick if you don't need them. Next up is the nose gear maneuvering range. Now this is what you would use in order to press and hold to turn the F-15 uh, faster because it does not have a nose wheel steering unless you press and hold this button. Uh, not necessary to have, you're only going to be using it while on the ground, so if you don't have the button, just press and hold S on the keyboard. But I'm using the pinky button in front of my joystick in order to use the S. These are the more important buttons to have. Now, radar on and off, you're only going to be using that once or twice. So this is not as necessary to have on your HOTAS. I do because I like to be sneaky sometimes and turn my radar on and off. I use my China Hat forward key in order to turn radar on or off. Next up is the radar pulse repeat frequency select. This is a little bit more important, but it's also probably something you can get away with if you're really hurting for space. Uh, just remember the keyboard shortcuts here. But I use the boat switch aft for the pulse repeat frequency. In order to change the pulse repeat frequency, as you can see at the bottom, it's going between high and medium. Uh, this is the intermediate mode where it flips between the two. If I want to specify my radar just to do the high, I hit my boat switch aft, and now as you can see, I have high pulse repeat frequency. I flip that button again, and now I'm in medium. Flip it again, and now I'm back into intermediate, which switches between the two. To know what exactly what it does, refer to your manual. I also use boat switch forward in order to engage the RWS and TWS. I can toggle through that as well. Also probably something you can get away with, but these two are a little bit more important than the radar on and off. The TWS button will just change your radar mode from RWS to TWS. So boat switch forward changes the TWS, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. Pressing it again is gonna bring me back to RWS. In order to increase my radar scan zone, I use my DMS left and right in order to do this. Just like my DMS up and down is for zoom in, zoom out, the increase and decrease is on the same exact button in order to reduce any sort of confusion I may have. So by pressing this new DMS left and right key, uh, if you'll notice at the bottom, I'm sweeping the entire uh, range here, but if I press DMS left, I'm able to narrow the beam essentially uh, faster response and you can see things a little bit better in this mode and if I hit DMS right it will uh, go back to its full uh, sweep of I think 60 degrees but I can't remember if that's true or not. In order to move the scan zone down or scan zone up 
I actually foregoed my trim for my elevators to go up and down and instead I use my trim button on my joystick. However, I do not use it for scan zone left or scan zone right as that is more used for the Sukhoi airplanes than it is for the F-15. So the radar antenna elevation, the trim up and down that we we're just talking about, uh, if I'm press and hold it all the way down, I'm going to be scanning at 0,000 feet. And if I just tap it up, I'm scanning from 0 to 42, from 0 to 55, and then I can actually move it, so I'm scanning only from 36,000 feet to 60,000 feet, etc. and so forth. So it's something to really have on your joystick, and it is very useful. Obviously, the most important button to have is to be able to lock something up, so TMS up seems to be the international standard of locking things or entering on the keyboard, but that's what I use, TMS up. And coincidentally, TMS down is to unlock, so this only works in the F-15 for the TWS mode. It will not work for RWS. Now, because I do still have a trim button for left and right, I use both of these to trim my left and right wings. I really don't use it as much, though. I think this is more useful for something like a flanker. Now, in order to change my weapons, once I have a weapon selected between between, let's say my aim 120 aim 7 aim 9 you need to use the weapon change button or d on the keyboard i use my index finger on the right side of my joystick and that is my weapon change so in order to change weapons between the different missile types that i have over here i would first turn on my radar and by default i have the aim 120 selected but if i wanted to switch let's say my sidewinders i press that button and i'll get the ground wave tower or if i want the aim 7s i would switch to the aim 7 pressing the same key so it is something that is very useful to have on your stick if at all possible. Now on the F-15 you have to make the distinction that weapon fire is not the same as weapon release. Weapon fire is the trigger in front of it. For your index finger, this fires your gun. And no matter what happens, whenever you press that trigger, it will always be guns. However, weapon release is used to uh, fire off your missiles. And obviously this is going to be your big red shiny button in front of your joystick. So. There goes that. Now this button you really don't need, but the weapon jettison is something that I have set up, and it is my landing gear worn silence button on my throttle base, and I just have this set up if I very quickly need to dump my external fuel tanks. But of course, you really don't need to have this left control W is uh, something that everybody seems to use, so easy. Okay, now that is all done, we still need to go and assign axes. Because in this all section over here, what you're doing is assigning buttons. This is like the press and pull buttons. This is the switch forward and back. But if you actually have like something like an axis, a rotary, for example, or the joystick motion, this is where the, uh, it falls under the axis commands. And over here, just like in the previous section, the first thing you're going to want to do is check your rudders over here and see what's mapped because some weird things are going to be mapped there. The only things you should worry about for this section is rudder, obviously, and your wheel brake left, wheel brake right. Delete anything else that's in here. So under the rudders, what we're going to do is uh, if it's not assigned, you're just going to click add and you're going to move uh, your rudders and then that's it. That's set. You do not need to do anything aside from putting a little bit of an axis tune. So by having Having the rudder selected over here, we're going to go click Axis Tune, and you're going to set yourself a nice curvature. I use 30. You might need less. You might need more. It's up to you. By default, it's obviously set to 0. But 30 seems to be a very nice number, so somewhere around there is nice. Now, for wheel brake left and wheel brake right, the only other thing you're going to need to do is invert. So when you have it, just make sure you click Invert for this one, and you're going to click Invert for this one. And that's that. No curvatures, no dead zones. Next up, we're going to move over to the throttle. Now, for the throttle, if you have uh, just a single throttle, not a split throttle, so you just have one throttle to use, you're going to use thrust. And you're going to add it the same way, click here, add, blah, blah, blah. But if you do have a split throttle like I do, thrust left, thrust right, then you need to map these two. No curvatures, no nothing, just that, and that's it. Next up is the TDC slew horizontal, or vertical. Now, if you do have a mouse nipple or a little mouse on the thumb of your X-52 or on, let's say, on this throttle, I have a mouse nipple in the front of my joystick. I, it's like a joystick. It's an axis. And I can use that to move around the little radar cursor. So uh, you will use the horizontal and the vertical to map that. Horizontal is left to right. Vertical is up and down. The only thing you're going to need to do is also assign yourself a little bit of a saturation and curvature. By default, this goes from here to here, and it's just too much of a range. So when you touch this uh, mouse nipple, everything just 
starts flying. The cursor goes everywhere. So by limiting the motion here, you have a much more fine-tuned uh, way of uh, having control over your radar. So you're going to set this up. There's no invert for this. However, there is an invert for this. So make sure you invert this. And of course, a saturation and curvature. No dead zones. As an added bonus, I do have a little uh, friction slider on the side of my throttle. So in order to zoom in and zoom out like I do my videos, so it kind of looks like I have binoculars and I'm just zooming way out into the distance, uh, I actually use a uh, joy slider, that's a little friction knob, and I assign that and then axis tuned it so it looks a little bit like this. Uh, I have to check mark the slider and I used a curvature in the negative. See, by default, it's at zero. And whenever you're sitting in the cockpit, you just walk in. Uh, it feels like the head is like pushed all the way in and you're like looking inside the heads up display. So when I have my uh, friction slider in the neutral position and I'm just sitting there, I kind of want to be zoomed out a little bit so I can see. It's kind of like increasing a uh, FOV. And that's exactly what's happening here. So I use about negative 21 works for me. It might need to be different for you. It's up to you. You need to play around with it. Additionally, what happens here is that by default, I think track AR will try and set some kind of axis here in order for you to use zoom view. So whenever you would tilt your head forward and back, it would act like you're zooming in and zooming out out in the world. If you don't like that and you just want to use a little slider, then you need to go here and delete whatever is set here for zoom view for track AR. If you do not have an axis to use here, but you still want to kind of zoom in, zoom out, and you want to use your head in order to do this, then this is where you would set your track AR if it's not there. Finally, the last two things is to set up our pitch and roll. And my axis for these are set as such. There is no dead zone for my pitch, but there is a slight dead zone for my roll. This works only for me. I set it to a small minuscule amount of four uh, because whenever I would just touch the joystick just a little bit, it would start to move because this is so sensitive. And I kind of didn't like that. So I went ahead and just added a tiny bit of a dead zone so that a little bit of uh, motion on the joystick wasn't uh, making me start rolling. And that's it for this section. Now, in order to actually save all this, because you never know, you might want to reinstall the game, you might need to reformat or whatever, it is a very good idea to save these things, guys. So you never have to go through this again. So under the back and the all section for the F-15, what we're going to do is you're going to ignore the rudder pedals, because this is blank anyway, but we're going to save the profile for the throttle and the profile for the joystick. So first I'm going to select the column for throttle, I'm going to save the profile as, I'll save it to some sort of location that you're going to be aware of. I have an external drive, I put everything there as a backup. And I'm going to label it F15C uh, throttle. Then I'm going to do the same, I'm going to come here, I'm going to click save profile as, F15C joystick. Great. Let's say you've reformatted the game, you're in here, you want to load the profiles in, clear this, clear this, clear this, so everything's clear. And then go down the throttle, you're going to click load profile, you're going to switch over here to all files, and then wherever it is you save these profiles, you can select it, and it's going to say F15 throttle. Throttle section, F15 throttle, click OK, and it's going to load it all in. Then you're going to repeat the process, you're going to come here, load profile, F15C, joystick, boom, stick it in there. Great. So that's the only thing that really sucks about all this is that you're going to need to set up one profile for the F-15. Uh, so it's going to be throttle and joystick. And I think by doing these two things, it is going to save the axis commands as well, though in the rudder section, it might not. Um, this is not a big deal. This is just very quick work around anyway. But uh, as you see, there's a lot of aircraft and the more modules you buy, the more profiles you're going to need. But instead of, let's say, making a profile for the F-15 and then making a profile for the MiG-29 and then another profile for the 29G, I don't do that. So I have a single profile for the F-15 and then I've made a Sukhoi profile. And I use a single Sukhoi profile, the throttle and the joystick. And I load it for this, 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 this. Seriously. One profile for all of these because they work pretty much exactly the same. There are some minor differences for, let's say, the SU-25T, and I've kind of changed my profile for the SU-27. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go over what I have here. It is pretty much almost exactly the same as the F-15. 
Now I am gonna go over what the SU33 is like because that's what I'm using for all the other ones here. So to save time, I'm gonna go over the SU33. I'm gonna go over it a little bit quicker this time. So we're under the all section and just like the F15, I'm gonna set up my BVR, my radar modes over here. The only difference is I skip my boreside mode and instead I replace the down coolie hat as my helmet mode. So that one is gonna be important and that one works great for all the uh, Sukhois because you're gonna be able to use that little off uh, bore type of missiles like the R-73s. So this is really important to have. And if you're hurting for space and you're really using keyboards, if you do have a button spared, I will probably try and make sure I have that because that could save your life. Air brakes is the same story as on the F-15. Autopilot, uh, you have quite a bit more options over here. But uh, what I have set up is the altitude and roll hold. I have the attitude hold and then the radar altitude hold. And these are all the same buttons. So on the throttle, my left pinky and then the autopilot uh, panel, the switches forward and uh, aft. I, if you're hurting for space and you just need some simple uh, autopilot, this barometric altitude hold works just fine. But make sure you also have the autopilot disengage either written down somewhere or mapped. Next up, the cannon. Now for the Sukhois, this cannon button is super important. It does not work the same way it works in the F-15. And it is also set up as my front paddle switch for my joystick, the same way I do have it in the F-15. The Russian aircraft don't use the same kind of way of firing guns and weapons like the F-15 does, for example. On the F-15, this shiny big red button over here would launch a missile. And the trigger in front, where his index finger is right now, would fire the guns. However, right now, if I'm pressing my trigger, nothing is going to happen. No guns are firing. In order to fire guns, I need that paddle switch forward to switch to guns. And now when I fire, the guns go out. Also note that in order to fire uh, missiles, you also have that issue where... Uh, you do not fire with the weapon release, you still fire with the trigger. So it's a little weird, but it is what it is. The countermeasure dispense is exactly the same as the F-15. The display zoom in, zoom out is also the same. The next difference in the SUs is the electrical optical system. This is your ERST, or your thermal imaging. So this is O on the keyboard, but I've replaced one of the buttons and I use the bolt switch forward in order to make this work. The new electrical optical system is the bolt switch forward that we've just set up. And by doing so, you will see EO on the top left corner. And now you can use uh, no radar, but just your thermal imaging. Uh, so it works exactly like a radar, but with a lot more limitations. My engine start and stop is the same. Flaps are the same. My gear lights, the left side of the throttle, same as the F-15. Another new thing that you're going to see is the launch permission override. You can override your radar to tell it to shoot, even though it's telling you you don't have very good parameters. Uh, so it's kind of like a uh, permission override, literally what it says. Now, in order to use this, I use the pinky switch button in front of my joystick. Radar on and off is also the same as the F-15, trying to head forward. The pulse repeat frequency is still um, boat switch aft. Now, my radar scan zone increase and decrease is DMS left and right. Now, over here, you see return to search. This is the same thing you have in the F-15 where it's unlocked TWS. Uh, so this is your TMS down button. TMS up will be your target lock. TMS down is return to search. Now, in order to use the scan zone down, up, left, right, I actually foregone my entire trim hat key, and instead I'm using that in order to use the scan zones left, up, down, right. So in order to scan above or below you, you will notice on the right side of the heads-up display you have a zero. By pressing that trim hat key up and down, I will be able to scan up above me and below me. I can also scan uh, in three sectors with the radar here so in front of me to the left of me to the right and that's where the trim to the left and to the right comes into play currently the bar just above the 10 indicates that i'm scanning just in front of me as you can see over here just the arc right on the top but if i were to press that uh, trim key to the left now i'm scanning to the left the arc is to the left back to the center and if i press it to the right i'm scanning over just to the right side and back to the center Weapon change is exactly the same as the F-15, it's the index finger and the joystick. Weapon fire is going to be the trigger. You see there's no weapon release because of how differently the Russians do things. So you're actually not going to use that thumb button. Weapon fire is the trigger, your index finger in front of your joystick. 
And then obviously I have my optional weapon jettison. And just the same way that we did in the F-15, we're gonna go back into the Axis commands for the Su-33. You're gonna clear everything here. There is no left and right uh, brakes, but there is the rudder. So make sure you have that set and you have the Axis tune. Then the same way we did in the F-15, the TDC horizontal, the same axes, the same uh, curvatures are similar to it. And then your thrust left, thrust right, or the thrust plus the zoom view. And finally the pitch and the roll. And then the axis tunes are set up for that as well. And that's it. At this point, I would make sure that I've saved everything. So I'm going back to all. I would uh, save the throttle and save it as SU throttle and then joystick SU joystick. Now, because I do use a slightly, slightly different profile for the SU-27, I also have an additional profile that says um, SU-27 uh, throttle and then SU-27 joystick because it has a few more um, things added in here. For example, the ACS to do the Cobra. So I use the pinky switch button for that on the joystick. And then I've also changed the DMS. Uh, so my DMS HOTAS on my joystick, I use that to use the scan zone down up left right. And instead for my trim, I use the trim in all four directions as I'm supposed to because the SC27 kind of needs it. So there's that kind of a change. And then that's it. After you've made sure you've saved everything and everything's good to go, then uh, you should be set. We obviously still need to go through all of the tutorials. You need to go through the manual if you can. I know it's kind of a pain in the butt, but you're gonna need to do some legwork on your own. I can't just describe everything to you. This takes a long time to learn. It is a simulator for reasons. But uh, this should at least give you a head start as long as you've written things down, you know what buttons are what, and you have a piece of paper in front of you. If you ever need to reference, look at that piece of paper and you should have a little bit more of a heads up on what's going on. So I highly encourage do the tutorials and uh, watch some YouTube videos online. And then if you can get some help, the Hoggett community on Reddit will definitely help you guys out if you're just starting out or you need a little bit more expertise in certain things. Anyway, this is long enough, so I'm gonna call it here. Good night, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.